Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.5 beta 2 released today to developers on all iOS 16 supported devices. iOS 16.5 beta 2, while it's out to developers, should be out to public beta testers either by the time you're watching this video or within the next day or so. And it comes out at the same time for everyone around the world. If you're a developer, you'll have it now or public beta tester later. So iPhone 8, 8 plus and newer are supported. And this came in at a fairly small 605.4 megabytes. That's on the 14 pro max. It's about the same size on all the devices here. And along with this, Apple also released iPad OS 16.5 beta 2, Mac OS 13.4 beta 2, watch OS 9.5 beta 2, TV OS 16.5 beta 2 and HomePod OS 16.5 beta 2. Now this particular update does have a modem update in it. So if you're on the previous beta, you'll have a modem update going to beta two, which hopefully will help with connectivity. If you were having issues with that. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general then about. And as you can see, the build number is two zero F five zero three nine E. And this particular update has a few small changes here and there. And the first one has to do with software updates in general, rolling out to different betas. Now with this software update, when you go in, you now have the option for beta updates or public beta updates, depending on what you're signed up for. You can change it between that. Apple has now updated that on Apple watch as well as Mac OS. So if you have the beta profile installed, that no longer really is relevant, even though it will work. If we go to software update on watch here, give it a second, you'll see beta updates actually show up. We can then switch it between developer and public beta as well. This is true on Mac OS this time around also. Now, also something else that's new in this update is you're now able to install the beta with less than 50% battery. So thanks to Braden for sending this in, he was able to install it with 38% battery and without it being plugged in. This is something that's new. It seems to work all the way down to 20% battery life now. So that seems to be a new change in this update. Also, some people are saying that under settings, Within settings, if we go back and go to about and then coverage under coverage, they're seeing a new glyph icon for AirPods pro. Now I'm personally not seeing much of a difference here, but some are actually seeing a new glyph. They do need to update the glyph for AirPods pro too, as it doesn't show the real AirPods. Everything else has their own custom sort of graphic of the device itself where AirPods pro two actually shows a drawing. Now, as far as splash screens, there were a couple new ones. The first one was in the home app. You saw it there. I took a screenshot of it and here's the new one for home where it says, control your home, set it and forget it and share access. Also, there was a new one for game center. So it says activity widget and activity access. These popped up for me on both beta one. And then again on beta two with game center. Now there was also an AirPods update today as well, and that actually covers AirPods pro second generation, AirPods pro AirPods second and third generation and AirPods max. They updated it to version five E one three three. However, some people are having trouble installing it. We'll have to wait and see, but it's updated on Apple's website, actually explaining firmware about AirPods. You'll see the latest firmware versions listed here. So they updated their website with them. This should be available. Now, if you want a separate video about it, once I figure out what's new, let me know in the comments below. Something else worth mentioning is there's two new Apple stores opening up and they're the first stores in India. The new Sackett store in New Delhi is opening April 20th and I'll link these in the description, but they have some nice new wallpapers here along with Apple music playlists. They're also opening another store, Apple BKC. This will be in Mumbai on April 18th. So again, same thing with new wallpaper as well as it says move to the sounds of Mumbai. They have new playlists and you'll see it here. You can join today at Apple and more information about that. So again, I'll link those in the description and those will be really nice. The first stores opening up in India. Additionally, the updates from previous betas with beta one, basically just news in Siri. We have that new sports section here and Siri can now activate a screen report recording. We're also waiting for an updated next gen CarPlay, also heavily updated accessibility mode and iMessage contact key verification. So far, those aren't here yet but there are some changes within the code. There's mentions of a sound setting for Apple pay, but that's not showing up yet. It may be when you're actually paying to a device, but I haven't found that yet as far as sound and haptics, where it will ignore what you do with your silent switch and still play the sound when you pay with your phone. There's additional wording changes here and there for spelling corrections or just maybe wording corrections as well. 
Now let's take a look at the release notes as well. So we'll go into the feedback app here and within the feedback app, they still haven't updated it with beta two notes. However, their public facing website has updated it. So this is where you can see everything that's currently released in their news and updates. And if you go to release notes, you'll see a few different updates here. A new feature where it says a shared administrator in a home is now able to pair and add matter accessories. That's been around for a bit and they only have resolved issues. There's no known issues, which is great. So four things that they've fixed to do with matter accessories where they've fixed all of those remaining issues. So not a whole lot more in here, which means hopefully it's becoming more and more stable. As far as remaining bugs though, there are bugs that they're not mentioning. For example, there's duplicate wallpaper bugs. So when you go to add a new wallpaper on your lock screen, you can see under collections, there's duplicate wallpaper. So it's not a major issue, but it's something worth noting. Additionally, that notification bug is still there. So if we exit out of here, I don't have any notifications, but still it's a bit choppy and I haven't heard of anyone having the squared off corners, but it does seem to be a bit choppy for some. So still some issues that they need to resolve. As far as overall performance though, it seems to be okay. In fact, Geekbench will show that in a moment, but performance on the iPhone 11, which is a little bit older now, seems to be okay. Whether that's scrolling, it seems to be fine. Opening different games and apps, it seems to be nice and fast. I haven't opened Apple Music since installing the update here, and you'll see it's nice and fast. It just had to wait for the Wi-Fi connection. As far as ProMotion, it seems to be fine. It does actually ramp up and down, so, the Hertz rate speeds up or slows down as needed, but it seems to be nice and fast. No issues opening apps, like I said, and so far it's nice and fast. And as far as the overall heat, well, it seems to be nice and cool. It was a little bit warm to begin with. That's normal as it's processing background information, but no issues there. And as far as battery life, it takes a few days to measure that, but battery on this device, we'll go to battery here and battery health and charging. I'm at 97%. This went down another percent over the past week or so. The updates don't affect that. And if we go over the last 10 days, you'll see yesterday my battery wasn't great at all. Two hours and 56 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and 24 minutes of screen idle time. Today though, maybe there's a touch issue here. I keep having to hit this here. You'll see three hours and 53 minutes of screen active time, which is much better. And I'm still not at 50% usage and 44 minutes of screen idle time. Hopefully it's much better. Again, it will take a few days to measure that. And we'll have a follow up on the weekend where we talk about this features and bugs and more. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 16.5 beta two, probably not at this point, I'd probably wait until the future versions come out. If you're not running it on your main device yet, you may want to wait. There's not any major changes or features yet that would really warrant installing that unless you're a developer. And as far as when to expect the next version, iOS 16.5 beta three could be as soon as next Tuesday. Last time around, when we went from beta two to beta three, it was weekly. However, it could still be bi-weekly. We won't know until next week for sure, but that seems to make sense. Maybe next week. And if we have beta three next week, maybe a release candidate after that or beta four, but either way, I would expect a public release probably sometime in mid May. We don't know a hundred percent, but that's typically what Apple does every year. And then of course with WWDC 2023 on June 5th, we'll see iOS 17 beta one for the first time. And then of course we'll have betas all the way until a public release, which is typically in September just before what we have with iPhone 15 launches. So that's usually what we have every year. That seems to be the most likely scenario. As far as benchmarks, well, like I said before, they're quite good. If we go into benchmark six, I ran this here. I had 2,522 for single core, 6,308 for multi-core. If we compare that with the previous version with beta one, and I took a screenshot to compare, you'll see here beta one had 6,207 versus 6,308 and then 2,522 versus 2,518. In both scenarios, it's better with beta two so far. So nice and smooth. Again, it will take a few days to know what it's like. And so that's everything so far in iOS 16.5 beta two. If you found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.